If you've played a Pokemon game that's come out in the past 10 years, I bet one of your biggest complaints was probably this was too easy. Even if you enjoyed these games, you were most likely thinking something along the lines of, man, I wish these games were as hard as the old ones, the ones that were made for real fans to test our knowledge as Pokemon trainers. But were the old games actually difficult? That's the question I'll be answering in this video. But before we start, I think I have to define what an old Pokemon game actually is. Anything before X and Y will be considered older games, and everything after Black and White 2, so Gen 6 and onwards, will be considered newer games. I think this is something most fans can agree with. I'm also only going to be talking about the mainline series games, so please don't go into the comments and yell at me for not talking about the final boss of Pokemon Sleep. The DS era of Pokemon games was, in my opinion, the series' peak. From the graphics, to the music, to the Pokemon themselves, everything was just incredible. But this is also where a lot of people would say that the series was at its best in terms of difficulty, which I kind of agree with. These were the generations where Game Freak finally started to remember that Pokemon had four move slots and take advantage of that. They also started giving gym leaders coverage moves to deal with counters. So did these systems actually make Pokemon a lot harder? On paper, you'd probably think so. But there's a couple advantages as a player that most people forget about. First of all, most important trainers before the Elite Four only have four, three, or sometimes even just two Pokemon. So even if a gym leader or admin has a very powerful ace, the rest of their team will usually be very easy to deal with, and then you have three or four remaining Pokemon to throw at their one. The only time you're ever going to have a full 6v6 before the post game is against the champion, and maybe your final rival battle. But other than that, you'll always have the advantage in numbers. Another feature I've seen a lot of casual or less experienced fans forget about is status moves. That's right, the quote-unquote useless moves that you replace on your Pokemon the moment you get the chance are actually insanely overpowered in a normal playthrough. That Growl, your starter, and many other Pokemon come with at level 5 reduces the opposing Pokemon's physical damage by one-third for the entire rest of the battle. Assuming that they don't swap, which, let's be honest, the AI in these games doesn't really do. So that mill tank you've been struggling with for the last few hours, just use a stat lowering move a few times, and all of your problems will go away. But what if the enemy does the same thing to me? Well, then you can just swap to a different Pokemon and all of those stat changes will go down the drain. And if that still isn't enough to convince you that the player has a massive advantage over the rest of the game, then there's nothing stopping you from overleveling all of the enemy trainers. Like, what are the Elite Four gonna do against your level 100 Pokemon? Now I know what you're going to say, what about the actually hard battles in Pokemon, like Getsus or Cynthia? Don't they make the game difficult? I don't completely disagree. These are hard fights. Getsus, for example, is arguably one of the most challenging battles in any Pokemon game. He has a team of 6 fully evolved and very strong Pokemon all at the same level, as well as 4 full restores that he can throw on his Pokemon at any point in the battle. If that wasn't enough, before fighting him, you have to first fight N, who on top of having 5 strong Pokemon, has Reshiram or Zekrom as well. And of course, 4 full restores. If I were to tell you that this fight wasn't hard, I'd be an absolute idiot. But the problem is that the rest of the game is way easier. All of the gym leaders have no more than three Pokemon. And the Elite Four? Each of them only have four Pokemon. And unlike the old games, they're all the same level, so you won't find yourself underleveled if you prepare yourself properly. The same can be said for Red and Cynthia in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and Platinum. Sure, these fights are difficult, but other than a few exceptions, the path to these final bosses isn't a very challenging one. So in my opinion, one or two difficult battles doesn't make a game full of easy ones a hard Pokemon game. But is this a bad thing? Of course not. An easy final boss is incredibly anticlimactic, and can leave you feeling negative about the game as a whole. But like I said, a few difficult fights does not make the entire game hard. I want to take you back to 2018, when Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were released. New games that were set in the Kanto region, with your starter being based on whatever game you picked. One of the biggest pieces of criticism these games received is that they were made for babies, 
that Game Freak made Pokemon way too easy. But what if I told you that the games these titles were based on were also incredibly easy? But that can't be true, right? The old Pokemon games were actually difficult, and the new ones are easy because kids these days are stupid, right? Well, that's actually not the case. All of the Kanto games are incredibly easy and require little to no effort to beat. I recently did a playthrough of Fire Red with Nuzlocke rules, and guess what? It was easy. Like, really easy. 90% of the trainers in this game could be beaten by just pressing the surf button over and over again until they're out of Pokemon. Plus, Let's Go actually fixes some of the biggest issues I had with the Kanto gym leaders, which was giving them coverage moves and evening out the levels on their teams. Now, are the Let's Go games still ridiculously easy? With the untoggleable EXP share and your overpowered starter, of course they are. But I don't think they made the overall Kanto experience that much easier, and really only added new quality of life features. So far, everything I've said has been assuming that you're playing with the default game settings and no added rule sets. I mean, Pokemon doesn't exactly have your traditional difficulty settings, so most people would play how Game Freak intended. But if you've been struggling to enjoy Pokemon over the last few years because of how easy the old and even the new games feel now, then maybe changing the way you play will revive that magical feeling you got experiencing these games as a kid. First of all, play on set mode. The free switch you get when you defeat an enemy Pokemon just feels like cheating. Plus, the added difficulty of losing a turn every time you want to swap a Pokemon really makes the battle more exciting. This might be a hot take, but I think set mode is how Pokemon was meant to be played. But obviously, I'm not going to view you any differently as a person if you don't like it. If that's not enough for you, then maybe try the Hardcore Nuzlocke, a list of rules you can add to your playthrough to really turn up the difficulty. These rules include only being able to catch the first Pokemon you encounter in each named area. If a Pokemon faints, it must either be released or placed in a PC box where you cannot touch it ever again. You have to play on set mode. You cannot overlevel the next gym leader. And you cannot use healing items in battle. Not only does this rule set make the experience more challenging, but every playthrough will feel fresh since you're forced to use a team of Pokemon you might not have used before. And of course, there's nothing wrong with adding or removing rules that you may like or dislike. So if old Pokemon games weren't ever difficult, then why not? And will they ever be? We first have to acknowledge what Pokemon's main audience is, children. No matter what argument you make for the number of older fans there are, Game Freak will always develop these games to be primarily marketed to kids. But I don't think Pokemon games being as easy as they are is a bad thing. This might be another hot take, but after a long day of working on other things that require a lot of my brain power, I really wouldn't be looking forward to playing a game that forced me to use a lot of thinking to progress. And if you really want to play a hard Pokemon game without adding a bunch of rules, just play a ROM hack. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like them in the future, be sure to subscribe. I've decided to dedicate this channel's content to short and easy to digest Pokemon video essays. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and goodbye!